your candidate might be better on, I don't know, health care than Joe is. But you've got to look at who's going to win this election. And maybe you have to swallow a little bit and say, okay, I sort of personally like so-and-so better. But your bottom line has to be that we have to be Trump. I don't know. I think that was a less than ringing endorsement of Joe Biden by none other than his wife, Jill. This as the race for the Democratic nomination continues to heat up. Now, the former vice president, he's consistently led in the polls. But is there any enthusiasm behind those numbers? I want to ask a liberal radio host, Ethan Berman, and a uh, Daily Caller's uh, editor in chief, Chris Bedford. Ethan, let me start with you. Uh, yeah, I know Biden still has sort of this double digit lead and some polls. I think CNN's got him at 29 percent. But that's like 71 percent ain't budging. And I don't see any excitement, any fire under his candidacy. Well, he's been playing it kind of slow and cautious up until now. They just released their first TV ad today. And to your point, though, the Fox News poll that just came out the other day shows him up 12 against Trump. So I think his wife, Dr. Jill Biden, who's quite accomplished on her own right, you know, is making the appeal here that he's the moderate. He can win. He can take on Trump. And for as much as the right wants to paint the Democrats as pure socialists and use that boogeyman word, look, a lot of Democrats aren't. And Joe plays very well with the middle and the blue-collar Democrats in the middle of the country. Chris, I mean, the poll that Ethan referred to shows everyone beating President Trump, right? So anyone could make that claim using that particular poll. I think, uh, you know, even Beto might be able to make the claim. But the, the, but the fact of the matter is, is that uh, Biden, although he's leading, his lead has not increased. It's been sort of sideways. And we saw in Iowa the crowds were... Elizabeth Warren got the crowd. She has the enthusiasm. She has the momentum. I'm not sure Joe Biden can afford to, quote, unquote, play it safe. And when Liz Warren is more charismatic than you on the campaign trail, then you might be in a little bit of trouble here because that's not always been her selling point. She's, she's always looked at as more of a technocratic kind of candidate. Joe Biden seems to have lost some of the fire that he had previously, and this has always been a concern because when has he actually done a, run a national campaign successfully when he wasn't with President Barack Obama, the rock star of the Democratic Party, their, their Reagan? Uh, I would be worried if I was Biden, and it sounds like what Jill said here is something that people might say quietly in back rooms when they're actually worried about the candidate who does have the better chance of beating Trump of any of the candidates. But in public, that's not how you should ever describe it, an endorsement for the guy you think is going to motivate Democrats. Ethan, another thing that, can, uh, that I noticed is uh, there is a, a, some, a poll out on Friday that talked about who's your second choice, right, as this thing gets whittled down. And, you know, Biden, very, he barely registered anything on anyone's second choice. I think, again, Warren had the most second choices. Sanders' second choice, uh, not in the race, which suggests maybe, you know, those Bernie bros might be looking at Trump if they don't go with Sanders again. But what do you make of that? Well, it, I, because I think people are seeing Biden as the front runner, so they're not looking at him as a second choice. I think a lot of people are handi handicapping this by saying, who is the great VP to pair with Joe Biden? And, uh, you know, you, you mentioned another name in there, which is, which is Beto, who does have the charisma going right now. And uh, it, it'll be very curious to see how he plays it. But with the Biden thing, I, I just don't see him being a vice president for anybody. That's why he's not showing up as anybody's second choice. He wins this or he doesn't. He's not going to be somebody's VP candidate. Right now, uh, the, uh, right now the president uh, confirming that the White House, and this is breaking, folks, the White House uh, officials, they are discussing uh, what they're saying, a, a temporary payroll cut uh, tax cut. This, of course, just in time for an election. By the way, we're going to bring you all of his comments as soon as we get them in. But, uh, uh, Chris, what do you make of this? I mean, the White House saying earlier today that they weren't discussing this. But this is interesting because I think President Obama was pretty big on this. The notion that, okay, 47 percent of Americans don't pay federal tax. He reminded us over and over again that just about every worker does pay these, these sort of payroll taxes and that they deserve a tax cut. Maybe the Democrats would be on board. He, and he temporarily cut it twice to try and juice the economy when we were in the last recession. Uh, Democrats may have been on board at this one point in time if a Democrat was proposing it. I don't look at Democrats as being on board with really anything under President Trump. And they may also face a little bit of pushback, even if they shouldn't, from some of the fiscal hawks on the Republican side who are saying, all right, this is great. We've done rounds of tax cuts before. We're going to cut taxes again, but the deficit keeps on going up. Where, where is the government cutting on the government side going to come from? Ethan, how hard would it be for the Democrats, particularly the Democratic presidential candidate, to say, hey, 
We denied you a payroll tax cut even as we rail against the tax cuts for the rich. I think they need to argue it as if there's going to be a tax cut, we need to increase the ceiling on the wages where we take the Social Security tax. When Greenspan, Reagan, and O'Neill did the grand deal in 82 to fix Social Security, they didn't pin it to inflation. So we have the problem that it never matched up. And I think Democrats it would go for it if there was a corresponding increase, let's say up to $200,000 in wages or $250,000, they might actually go for saying, yeah, we should drop the Social Security tax and, and help the middle class and the lower income classes. All right. Great, great, uh, great answers. Uh, hey, Ethan, Chris, thank you both very much. Appreciate it.